What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at file dialog boxes for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at file dialog boxes. And that's this guy right here. So we've got a button, we can click it, this little thing pops up, we can select a file. When we do, it returns the file name, and then we can do anything we want with that file name. If we want to open the file, if we want to write to it, if we want to do anything at all, we can do that. We have the file location. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. All right, so I've got a file here called dialog.py. It's just our basic PyQt5 starter code. And I think first we'll start out in the designer. So let's head over to the terminal and I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on and let's go ahead and run the designer. And when we do this pops up, let's go ahead and create a new main window. And let me resize this guy real quick. And we just want a very basic app here. So we just want a button. Let me just grab a button here and maybe I'll resize it a bit like that. Whatever. And let's say open file and let's come over here and change font size real quick. Okay, so we've got a button, no big deal. We also probably want a label. So let's come down here and grab a label just so that we have something to output here onto the screen once we select a file. So let me just sort of resize this and let's say open file, something like that. And if we want to resize this a little bit, we can, whatever. Okay, so that looks good. That's all we really need here. Let's go up, let's come up here and file save as. And I want to save this in my C PyQt5 directory. And let's just call this dialog. So this is going to be a UI file. So now we can head back over to our code. And like I said, this is our basic PyQt5 starter code. And you'll notice right here, I've designated dialog.ui as the UI file that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and open that file because we're going to need to grab some stuff from it. And that was dialog.ui. There it is. And we can come through here and grab all the different widgets. So we've got a Q push button. So let's go ahead and copy that. And let's import that up here. We also have a label. So that's Q label. And we also want to import the dialog box, the Q file dialog box, that's going to allow us to open that dialog box. And that's just Q file dialog. Okay, so we've imported the things we're going to need. Now let's come down here and define them. So let's go self dot and let's call our button button and set that equal to self dot find child. And then inside of here, we know this is going to be a push button. So we can put that and the name of our button is let's come through here and find it push button. So we can designate that there. And we've also got a label. So instead of button, let's call this guy a label. And also we know that's going to be a Q push label. So we can put that there. And the name of our label is, let's see, label, very complicated. All right, so we can put that in there. Okay, so we've now defined our widgets. Now we want to actually do something when we click the button, doesn't matter what, let's just define what happens when we click the button. So let's go self dot button dot clicked dot connect. And inside of here, what do we want to do? Let's run the clicker function. So let's go self dot clicker. Now we haven't created the clicker function yet. We'll need to do that. So let's come right down here and define clicker. We want to pass in self and okay. So for now, let's just go self dot label dot set text and say, you clicked the button. Okay, so this looks like it should work. We've got everything defined. Let's go ahead and run this just to make sure that all worked correctly. So let's come over here and go Python dialog dot pi. And when we do, we get our app. When we click this, it says you click the button. All right, so everything seems to be working. So now, instead of this saying you click the button when you click this, whenever we click the button, we want the file dialog box to open up. So how do we do that? Pretty simple. Let's just come down here to our clicker function. We don't need that. So let's just create a variable called F name. We're going to grab a file name and we want to set that equal to a Q file dialog dot get open file name, right? So the get open file name will open up the file dialog box, allow you to select a file from all the things listed, and it will grab the file name, right? And then we'll assign that to this F name variable, right? So inside of here, we can pass all kinds of things. First, we have to pass in self, we always have to pass in self. And now when the box pops up, there's gonna be a little title at the top of it, we can designate what that says. Let's just say open file, right? 
we can also designate what directory we want this to start in. So let's just start it in the current directory that this file is in. That's our C PyQt5 directory. So I'm just going to leave that blank. And you could designate anything you want. You could go C uh, backslash uh, GUI backslash um, something. So we'll try that in just a second. But for now, I'm just going to leave this as is. Now next, you can designate the types of files you want to look for by default. You know, when it pops up, what files are you going to be looking for? Image files, text files, PDF files, Python files, all files. You could designate all of those things. So I'm going to start out just with all files. And this little bit of text right here, that's going to be a drop down in the corner that you can click on to toggle between what you want to look up. So if you have more than one, if you want to open up PNG files and JPEG files, you could type PNG and JPEG right here. That will show up in that little drop down. And we'll look at that in just a second. I'll sort of explain more what that is. So let's go all files and then let's do this. So this, the star always stands for everything. All files, everything, all file extensions, right? So here, if we want more than one, we could put double semicolons. And then let's say we also want Python files. Well, Python files, and I should say inside of here, that's where you designate the file extension. So we, we want to say we want any file star that ends in dot pi, right? So if you wanted PDF files, you would type dot PDF, right? But we want Python files, so let's go dot pi. Okay, so that should work there. So let's say open file dialog. Now this will return a tuple with the file name and also the type of file it is. So I'll show you some ways to get around that. But for now, just realize that's going to return a tuple. So now let's uh, output file name to screen. So let's go if f name. So why are we doing an if statement here? Well, we might open the file dialog box and then click cancel. And if so, it's not going to return anything. So we only want to flash up something on the screen if we return something. So let's go if f name and let's just grab this guy from earlier. But instead of saying you click the button, we want to return f name. Now, Again, I mentioned that that was a tuple. So let's just convert this into a string and see what it is. It's going to return, I think, two things, and, and we'll see that. So, okay, that looks good. That should work. Let's head back over to our terminal and run this guy. But before we do that, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Whoa, weird commercial. I gotta stop doing that. It's horrible. All right, so let's run Python dialog.py. And when we do, this guy pops up. We can click this. Hey, it opens the thing. You'll notice it's in our PyQt5 directory. And you'll notice here it says all files. That is, let me pull up our code where we typed in all files right there, that's showing up. We also typed in Python files. So you'll notice if we click this thing, it says Python files, right? So whatever you type there, that's what it's going to show up here. And we can toggle between all files and Python files like that. So here, let's grab cb.py. I can click it, click open. And you'll notice, like I said, this is returning a tuple with two things, the file name here, and also the type of file what was selected in the drop down box. So if we change this to Python files, and now we go CB, it says cb.py and then Python files. So, okay, that's our, that's cool. But say we just want the file name. Well, a couple of ways we could do that. Let's head back over to our code. One, instead of turning this into a string, we could just call the zeroth item, right? That will work. So let's go ahead and save that. Run this guy again, open it. Now let's do calc. And you see now it just returns the file location. So that's an easy way to do that. That's probably what I would do. You could also do this weird little Python thing where you put a comma and then an underscore. That will work too. If you do that, then you don't need to do the tuple thing. I think that should work. Let's run this and see. People aren't all that familiar with that little underscore trick though. So it might just be confusing. Yeah, see, so that works too. You could do that. But again, like I said, a lot of people get confused by this underscore thing. Like, what in the world is that? So I'd probably just leave that off and instead just call the zeroth item from our guy there. So here is where the second argument here, the first is this open file. And in fact, if we run this guy again, 
Where is that open file thing coming? Well, right up here at the top here, it says open file in the little title bar thing. That's where that thing is coming from. So if we change this to open file title bar or something, saved it and ran it again. If we open this now up here at the top, it says open file title bar, right? So that's this thing right up there. You can have it say anything you want. It doesn't matter in the least. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at as open file. And this thing right here, this is the file location. Like I said, you can designate the starting directory of any directory that you want. So for instance, we could go C GUI. I have a directory called images. If we wanted images, we could do it like this. And you notice when I put one slash, it gets kind of confused. So you put two, you can do either one, you can do one slash or two slashes are sometimes escape characters. So our sublime text is getting a little confused. So you could just put two. Um, that seems to make it happy, <laughs> but either way works. And for here, instead of all files and Python files, maybe let's also put um, PNG files. And that's going to be star dot PNG. So PNG is a, an image file. So if we save this and run it, now we click on this, you'll notice now, look, we're in our C GUI images directory, and there's a bunch of PNG files. So if we just, just select PNG files, uh, we can grab a picture of me in Aspen here, and it returns Aspen. So you might be thinking, why are we worried about returning the file location? Why is that useful? Well, anytime you want to do anything with any file, you need the file location. And we're not going to talk about opening images or opening text files or opening PDF files in this video, we'll probably do that in, uh, in other videos. But no matter what you want to do with any sort of file, you have to have the file location. And that's why this file dialog box is important. And that's why returning the location is important. So now once we have this, we can do anything we want with it. Like I said, we can open this image, we could write to it, we could delete it, anything we want now that we have it. And this is how we have it. So that's dialog boxes, super easy. You'll use this for all sorts of things going forward. And we'll probably use this in the future for opening files and uh, actually doing something with them. Maybe we'll create an image viewer next or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but very cool, very easy. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDS of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com and I'll see you in the next video.